This video assumes that you have the Arduino IDE set up and working on your computer. If you have not done that yet, please watch my video on setting up the Arduino IDE. In this video, we are going to be covering the sketch that we use for the charger monitor board. And if you have not already done so, go to my website and download the sketch. Once you have the sketch loaded on your computer, then you have to import it into the Arduino IDE, which is what we have running here. And there's actually a couple ways to do it, but one of the ways I found easiest is just to come up here and say open. And then find where you put it. And then here it is, battery charge monitor. And then just say open. And then it'll ask if you want to create a folder because every sketch has to be in a separate folder. So, okay, and open. There we go. This ended up being quite a complex logic flow. And in fact, I ended up doing a flow chart on the behavior of the LEDs. And the funny thing is, I haven't done flow charting since college, and I've always thought it a waste. And I'll tell you though, I'm glad I did it because there's a lot involved in this logic path. And I'm not going to go over the flow chart here in this video, but I'll post it on my website so you can take a look at it. And it might be useful to look through the flow chart as you look through the program code. And like any Arduino sketch, there is three sections that I'm using. Section one is the declaration section, the setup section, and then the loop section. So in this first section, this is where we set up some of the parameters of the application. Now to begin with, I'm going to be setting up what the pins are. So we see battery is on zero, float is on one, normal is on two, bulk is on three, and so forth. These are the pins that are connected to the LEDs. The sense pin is what discerns what the battery voltage is. And then we have some delays. I'm using these dirty flags as a method of knowing whether or not I've actually gone into a particular routine before. So as you may recall from some of the other videos, when the voltage is such that it goes into, say, a normal mode, it blinks for the first hour and then turns solid. But when we first turn this on, we don't want the thing to be blinking, we want the thing to be solid on. I use these dirty flags to determine whether or not I should blink the LED or not. So it's kind of the best way to think about it. Then after this declaration section, it goes into the setup, or again, what I like to call the boot up. We're defining the pins to be output. The first four here. And you notice it says battery float normal bulk. Those are the LEDs. So we're defining the pins on the AT1085 microcontroller to be outputs. And then we're defining the sense pin, which is an analog to digital converter, which measures the battery voltage as an input. And then we go down here and then I make a splash screen. And this is where you get that little funny cycling of all the different color LEDs when you first turn it on. That's all this does. And then we turn all the LEDs off. And by sending a high to each one of those lines, it turns the LED off. And a low actually would turn them on. So now we go into the loop section. And this is really the main section of the application. And it'll sit here all day long. And it is loop, 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 loop. And so the first thing it does is it reads the value of the battery. Since this AT1085 is running on 5 volts, that means that 0 volts on a sense pin will register as the number 0. 5 volts will register the number 1024. And then anything in between is going to be anything from 0 to 1024. Again, 0 represents 0 volts, 1024 represents 5 volts. So even though the battery is going to give us more than 12 volts, I have a Zener diode on there that subtracts 11 volts. So if the battery is dead, it's going to give us 11.8 volts. So we're going to sense at the very most 0.8 volts minimum. And then if the battery charger is charging at say 14.5 volts, then we can subtract 11 volts from it and then that gives us 3.5 volts. 
So this sense pin will sense anywhere between 0.8 and 3.5 volts. And it'll take that voltage, run it through an analog to digital converter, and it'll give us a number. And since it doesn't ever go to 5 volts or go down to 0 volts, we're never going to get 0 to 1024. We're going to get something between 50 and 800, say. If the sense value is greater than 60 and less than 240, I know the voltage on that sense pin is around... 12.2 volts, which is actually when the battery is 50% or less charged. And if I see that, then I blink the battery LED rapidly at one tenth of a second. If that isn't true, then it goes to the next one. And this is between 240 and 271. So this one is when the battery is uh, 50 to 75% full. And then we blink the battery at half a second. So that's the slow blink. The next one is between 271 and 314. That turns the battery on solid, and that means the battery is 75% to 100% charged. And then if the charger is running, the sense value is going to be 314 to 393, which is going to correspond to a trickle voltage. For the first hour, we'll blink it, and that's where this battery dirty flag comes into play. You're going to have to look at the flow chart because it's just going to be impossible for you to understand what's going on here. The tasks that are done are fairly simple. All we're doing is turning the LEDs on and off, basically. However, the complexity of it is the logic flow. You know, when I turn, when I blink this LED versus that LED. And so that's, that's the complexity of this thing. And now if we want to go into the Arduino website, arduino.cc, under learning, and you go to the reference section, then these are all the different commands that the Arduino understands. Now with the AT1085, just understand that not every command may be available. There may be some that are reserved only for the more powerful Arduinos. You're just going to experiment. You may find that when you're done with playing around with this AT1085, you may want to expand your knowledge in the world of Arduino, and then you may want to go into some of these larger boards, and they're not all that expensive. This is probably one of the most popular ones that you know. You can buy clones of these for five bucks. And so the last thing I want to talk about is errors. Sooner or later, you're going to end up getting an error. And one of the most common reasons is that every line has to have a semicolon, although there are a couple exceptions. For instance, with this F statement, you'll see there's not a semicolon. That's because it's a multiple line statement, and then it has these curly braces instead. But let's come up here and let's take and delete that semicolon. We do a verify. It's going to give us an error, and the errors are always in orange. And it's kind of cryptic, and also one error might make it look like there's another error. What I would do is if I make any changes, make one change, click on verify, make another change, click on verify, and so on. Because if you make 10 changes before you click on verify, you may not know where the problem was. So if we put the semicolon back in, click on verify, it's good again. Another pitfall is uppercase versus lowercase. These are all case sensitive. So if I came over here and made this a capital B, it says it doesn't understand what branch value is. So in reality, you should not really have to make any changes to this application. I mean it's fairly simple. I've got pretty much everything done the way it should be working. Unless you want to redo the whole thing. You know you can you can do that and if you mess it up you can always come back and reload this. Generally the only task that you're going to have to do is to upload it to the AT1085. Then you just plug in the Arduino board and then if you're using the SparkFun AVR programmer you just plug that in Click on Upload, and then that's the program loading, and then you're done. So at the very minimum, if you just want to create the software in the AT1085 for my projects, all you got to do is download the sketch from my website, and then bring it up in here, and then click on Upload, and you're done.